The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page three of the service bulletin, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the colic found on page three. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. We will pray responsively by a whole verse, a section of Psalm number 31 found on page 4 of the service bulletin. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. My my life life is wasted wasted with grief, and my my years years with sighing. My My strength strength fails me because of affliction, affliction, and my my bones bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. sit. Please be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. When Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ornament of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? 
She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to wear, look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as Jesus told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said to him one after the other, Surely not I. And Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to him, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I will die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. <coughs> they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John <coughs> and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to the three disciples, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, Jesus threw himself onto the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour would pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found the disciples sleeping for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, 
The one that I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when Judas came, he came up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And then the crowd laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of Jesus' followers deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. And the crowd caught hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. And they took Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed Jesus at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against Jesus, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even at this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you still need witnesses? You have proved this back to me. What is your decision? And the whole council condemned Jesus as deserving death. Some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards took, also took Jesus over and beat him. When Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Jesus warming himself, uh, Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, what? the man from Nazareth. We have a servant girl. Go ahead, servant girl. Oh, yes. <laughs> but Peter denied it, saying, And Peter went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say the bystanders. But again, Peter denied it. And then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused Jesus of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowds came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then Pilate answered them, For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what would you wish to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And the crowd shouted back, Crucify! 
Pilate asked them, Why? Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed Jesus in a purple robe. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes back on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. And the soldier compelled a bystander who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. And then the soldiers brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the stull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And the soldiers crucified Jesus, divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And when Jesus, with, with Jesus they crucified two bandits, one at his right and one at his left. And those who passed by derided Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking Jesus among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Then those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it, and they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. Somebody ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah will come. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, top from to bottom. Now the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way Jesus breathed his last, he said. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and Josie and Salome. They used to follow Jesus and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that was the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if Jesus was already dead, and summoned, summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been dead for some time. And when Pilate had learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and bring, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Joseph then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. Good to have you with us. Those of you visiting with us on this Palm Sunday, welcome as we
begin this most holy of weeks, beginning with this odd juxtaposition of praise and horror as the people of God, as we find ourselves caught up in this journey with Jesus. Starting at the top of the Mount of Olives, a little town called Bethany, Jesus tells the disciples, go and find a colt, the son of a colt, a very specific donkey. This wasn't any donkey, any colt. This was one that satisfied the prophecy that came from Jeremiah 9, who had said exactly that the Messiah would ride in on the donkey, a colt of a donkey, a very specific animal that hadn't been used so that it could be used for holy use. People began to see what was taking place, and it's a very steep descent from Bethany down past Gethsemane, down towards the Kidron Valley, up towards the Lion's Gate, and into the double gates of Jerusalem, where it would have been packed, like clear water and spring break, where traffic cannot get through. People were there to celebrate the Passover. It was one of the major feasts of the Jewish year. And you were called, you were directed to come to the temple and to join the family of God to worship. So, so many people were there. And here comes Jesus, palms, jackets, a hero's entrance. And of course, people singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And as a representation of the human experience, one minute you're screaming Hosanna, the next minute we're screaming crucify him. Because of our fear. Fear affects faith, unfortunately. If you weren't sure the pew was going to hold you this morning when you came in, you'd be a little fearful about sitting in it. Peter, the rock, the one who Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom. Through you the church will grow, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter was the man until he saw the fear of a servant girl who heard his accent, like someone from Alabama that showed up in New York City. I know where you're from. Because Galilee was seen as the hinterlands, the backcountry. I know that accent. In fact, I've seen you with him. Hey, no, not me. Must have been somebody else. A lot of us in town this weekend. You could have been confused. Again, someone else. You know, I think she's right. You're one of those Galileans. You've been hanging out with him. What, what, hey, no, no. Cock-a-doodle-doo. How would you have felt? It had just been prophesied. Peter, I love you, I get you, but before tomorrow night, you're going to deny me three times by the time the rooster crows twice. I can't imagine how heart-sick Peter must have been knowing that he had failed the very person he had pledged his life, his fealty to. How often do we do that? Not in great, grand ways like Peter, but in small ways. Discussions at a cocktail party. We have an opportunity to share something about our faith, and maybe not. Challenged by friends who are out playing golf on this gorgeous Sunday morning, who are wondering, why are you wasting time paying attention to old myths when we live in the modern age. Opportunity after opportunity that God gives us to stand firm as his witnesses, as his disciples, and yet we are so apt, and I claim this, we are so apt to go into self-preservation instead of standing firm for the person of Jesus Christ, knowing that the one we serve right now, right here this morning, has already defeated the one that they serve. I just shared as we talked our last discussion about the celebration of discipline. The last celebration is 
the discipline of celebration, that we come into this beautiful facility, we come into this sacred space that's been prayed in for almost 100 years, we come to hear word, to hear teaching, to be fed by sacrament. And then to walk back out into the world and not stand for what we believe in here today. It's not going to get easier, brothers and sisters. I don't like to be that way. But we've seen changes in just the last five to ten years in the Christian culture and the lack thereof and the exodus that is taking place that should wake us up as a church to proclaim the Spirit of the Lord is with us. And that as Isaiah proclaimed, he will come and those that were blind would see, those that were lame would walk, those that were hungry would be fed, and I will bring a new spirit on the people and we will be alive in that spirit and we should rejoice. And in our rejoicing, we are called to walk with him this week. Not because we need extra numbers in church, not because it looks good when a church is full, but it does that we, you, should make the decision to say, if Jesus can walk to the cross for me, if he can have that conversation with his father, and he calls his dad, Daddy, Abba, Dad, I'm in, I'm here, I'm on my knees, but if there's any way you, you are the God of all things, you can make all things possible, if there's any other way to accomplish your will, let this cup pass for me, but your will be done. that he knew and God knew we needed to know that the ways of power through the heavenly spirit is not of tyranny, not of politics, not of military power, but one of humility. That when Jesus on Monday, Thursday night, in the face and presence of his betrayers, takes a towel and takes the position of the lowest slave and washes their feet. That godly power is shown through humility Obedience, sacrifice, unbelievable love. So this Thursday we will be gathering together for our Monday Thursday service. We will invite you, if you are interested, to come and spend an hour with him anywhere between 8 o'clock at night and 7 in the morning. That Good Friday, as we join together and literally bring a wooden cross out in front that we can touch, that we can feel, that we can smell, that we can have some small, minute understanding of what Jesus is about to do for you and for me. And on Saturday night, we come into the space dark, one candle lit. And from that candle, every heart gets on fire and that candles begin to glow and we see the renewed glow that comes into the church after we go from darkness to light and finally Easter morning that we should be celebrating like it's the Super Bowl, NASCAR and the Masters all combined. Wouldn't it be unbelievable if the Christian community actually had that kind of excitement for the day of resurrection, the day that changed your life and mine, the day that opened us that we would not die, but we would have everlasting life with one another, with those we love and believe. All by saying what it says in Romans, if you proclaim with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he's been raised from the dead, you will be saved. Those are the disciples Jesus calls us to be. That we should not fear that would take the flesh here, but that we should be more fearful the one who could keep the soul away, and that's the, our Father in, in heaven. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consumes, but treasures in heaven where God's presence and promise is. So today we begin yet another journey and I invite you to walk with Jesus at every step. It's a long week, but man, it is so powerful, so enriching, so affirming 
that we see the one who made the promise to live and to die for you and for me keeps his promise so that we could wake up on resurrection day with a new option to live in the presence and the glory of God our Father. Brothers and sisters, Christ has died. Christ is risen. And as we journey together, someday Christ will come again. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. For the peace from above, and for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, Michael and Barry, our bishops, Jim and Bill, our priests, Sandy, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, and for the leaders of the nation, and for all authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruit of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged, infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those on our prayer list, Carl, Ron, Barbara, Chuck, Janice, Silas, Ellen, Mary Beth, David, Doug, Bob, Rachel, Robert, Spencer, Robert, Matthew, Jeannie, and Anthony, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays, Maggie, Judy, Spencer, Brennenden, Jane, Sharon, AJ, Isla, Joe, Janet, Wendy, Jim, Jimmy, Robert, Jen, Lynn, Lorraine, Bill, Aline, Gail, Donna, Murph, and Abigail. And anniversaries, Travis and Beth, Michael and Beverly, David and Pamela, Michael and Lorelei. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died, especially those we mention either silently or loud, in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence and oppression and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in, that, in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, thee O Lord, Lord our God. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
if you would like to come and see the watch. The watch followers of Jesus said, will you come and pray with me for one hour? And so we invite you to come from the end of the service Thursday night to sunrise Friday morning. Take one hour, 11 at night, 3 in the morning, wherever God calls you to. We will have the side door to the ramp open, everything locked for security. Thank you. Um, you know, I wanted to give you a little report uh, from the outreach committee, uh, you know, led by Telma Pilato and Terry Burns and several people that are working really, really hard to do really great stuff. Uh, we've been doing Bubbles of Love, which has been incredibly successful, um, offering people a chance to have clean clothes. We're doing pack a sack to feed the one and two year olds at Gully um, Center. Uh, we are doing the brown bags back in the back uh, that gives uh, the canned food for um, Hope Villages. And by the way, the brown bags and the food that you brought to the blue tubs have mounted over to 500 pounds of food you all have been given. We've got the check the box, which we know we've gotten now well over $10,000 worth of donations to uh, the food bank, which is going to be, I mean, they are so incredibly grateful. Uh, and we have one more that we are doing. Um, we are going to be doing three meals uh, to help First Methodist with their feeding of the homeless. It is going to be on the 5th Thursday of May, August, and October. And so now, usually I'm out here, you know, and I'm kind of hawking for some of your treasure. Treasure's not bad, but also you were called to give your talent and your time. And so I'm asking for time and talent. Um, we need uh, help. Terry Burns has done an incredible job of organizing the Pakistan, uh, but she is kind of stepping down. She can't do everything, and we've divided it up into different roles. We need people to organize it, people to do inventory, people to order, people to help. Some of these, and people to deliver. And some of these tasks are weekly, some are monthly, and some are quarterly. And if, there's, if God is putting it on your heart to take care of these little ones, please contact either Telma Pilato or Terry Burns. And then uh, Connie Booth, who has been doing our brown bag, it's a very simple ministry, she's gonna be gone over the summer. And so it may mean getting to Everly to order some more bags and maybe once every week or two, pick up the food and take it to the food bank, which is literally just down the street at Druid. And if somebody can do that or a couple of people can do that, that would be great, please let, um, either me or um, Talma no. And the third one is the food, pe food preparation. Uh, Brother Thomas is going to help us fix the food, but we need people to come, uh, possibly it may be two days, to do food prep one day and deliver the food and serve the homeless uh, the meal and clean up. It's gonna be a couple of afternoons of your life uh, on the fifth Thursday of those three months. And if it's on your heart to do that, would you please either call or text me? I'm not real good with emails. 
But if you would text me and let me know if you can do one of those, uh, I would really, really appreciate it, and so would the homeless. So thank, thank you. Sir, thank you. We will also send an email out to you that has all this and some links that you can click. But uh, I guess that's the wrong email. And, uh, <laughs> um, by the way, uh, but if you're here at the church and you're not getting our Friday church emails, either go online and input it online or call the church office and they'll get your email. We'll make sure that's done. So important, especially with all that's going on with so many jobs and things that we have to serve one another and to serve the community at their level. And we need our hands, feet, and heart for those that are in need. So thank you, Sandra, and Allie, and Tina, and Charlie for doing this. So just keep an eye out for that. So with that, let us proceed to the celebration of what Eucharist means to celebrate. And in the light of all that God is offering us, there's no better place than to celebrate before the Lord our God as he gives us the gift of new life and new love. Washed in blood of Christ our death, he gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gifts of your people. Help us to always use them with accordance with your purposes and mission for this season of life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave thanks, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking... Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on your hearts by faith. 
with thanksgiving. Amen. For those of you visiting with us today, it is the theology of the Episcopal Church that if you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, regardless of denominational background, you are welcome to come, for this is God's table.
As we move to the conclusion of the service today, just be aware that we do have a private baptism following directly after this service. Uh, it was only time when certain family members of their family could be here, and there was no way to weave a baptism into the middle of a Palm Sunday service. So just be respectful as you leave, as the family begins to get in and we get organized. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, keep this your family with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, we may be upheld by your divine protection as we journey to Easter this week. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.